Libra. Welcome to your December 2017 general tarot reading. It's Raina here. Before I begin, I just want to make you aware that I still have my 20% off all my readings through the month of December 2017. And I was just thinking as I, I said that, well, you know, the Librans I've met in my life, they um, they like to spend money. So I'm, I'm the kind of person that's very, like, I love a sale. But, you know, for those of you who may have Virgo <laughs> or Scorpio in your chart, and which you probably do, some of you, um, I just want to let you guys know at least. But um, the other thing I'd like to let you know is that if you're looking for a pure love reading, that's another thing I'm sure a lot of Librans are looking for as a love reading. It's already on my channel, and I actually do a separate astrology reading rather than uh, try to combine it in, into one reading. And I, I really like it like this because it gives me that variety and I can delve into things separately. It's worked out so far. Yes, it is like I'm putting out different sets of readings each month, but um, it's, it's all good, you know. Well, first and foremost, what I see here is some energy involving money and that being the centerpiece of December. Ace of Pentacles, what did I say in Pentacles? Ace of Pentacles, new beginnings, uh, especially of a financial variety, so new job, um, maybe getting money, the the clouds represents the universe, I, I guess you would say. So just getting some, some money that you didn't expect, like a windfall. And you see the portal. I didn't come up with this myself, so I'm not going to act like I'm so clever. But I remember reading about this, and they were saying like the portal represents, you know, this money allowing you to step into a new life and so it could be a business loan things like that and it's like an ace so it's a new beginning in this area and uh, let me think here just looking thinking about well okay here's the thing I was I was trying to make an astrological connection so that you could think about your influences in December and December 18th there's a new moon in Sagittarius um, so any kind of new beginning, especially of an internet-based business, that could be indicated for you. And likewise, let me think, well, I'm going to leave it there because some of the transits are happening actually after December. And, um, but that's, there could be a new relationship with somebody who is earthy. So if they're not like literally a Taurus Virgo or Capricorn, they could have it rising, a moon, uh, Venus or Mars in their chart where they, so if it was Venus and Mars, it would either just be Venus or maybe Venus and Mars, I'm thinking, where there's this sense of like when you talk to them that there's a very grounded perspective. In some cases, they might not even be so romantic, but they are very useful to you in, in terms of they, they really are good um, at organizing um, your life or helping you. So if that's the case, just remember that you may work better as like um, co-workers or having, running a business together. Sometimes people have that certain kind of um, chemistry, but overall, that might not necessarily be the person for you. In the past position, we have the Four of Swords, and that is a card that indicates a period of rest and relaxation, reflection. Uh, some people may have come from a vacation, but this is more contemplative, so it might not even be that you 
went somewhere far away and, and were um, sipping drinks with umbrellas, but actually that you were like a spiritual connotation or meditation, like some kind of retreat. However, this may have been that you pulled back in some regard involving um, your life. Um, maybe you retired and now you, you've gotten an offer that you can't refuse. It could be that in the past you were dealing with a, um, a swords, which is an air sign. The first thing that popped in my mind was Aquarius, but the other uh, air signs are Librans like you and Gemini. Oh yeah, well we are having a Gemini full moon. Maybe that's what that talks about, is that at the time of the Gemini full moon, these other things will transpire that will kind of um, pave the way for a new job offer or a new relationship with an earth, earthy type of person. But what do we have here for the present tense? The Five of Cups, a card of mourning the loss of something. Um, it's possible, you know, that you... Some people may have been laid off of a job, and so this is a new job that offer that's coming in, but you may still be a bit upset about something that uh, was taken away from you. Could be a person that uh, you have lost in some way, a relationship that did not work out the way that you wanted it to. So whenever I see you know, some really nice cards, and I see for the present tense, the Five of Cups, to me, it's that you need an attitude adjustment, that you are holding on to something for a long time. I mean, the Five of Cups could be something, a disappointment that happened long ago. And maybe that is contributing to you being stuck in place and not really progressing and not moving on with your life in some way. And so that we know that that can happen where, where a person has good things happening and they can't really enjoy them to the full extent, fullest extent because they are um, still fixated on something that didn't happen the way they wanted it to. Um, all of a sudden the, name, the sign Scorpio came into my mind, which is one of the water signs that would be affected by all of this. So if there was a Scorpio cancer, Pisces person that disappointed you. Um, it's important to really look at what the relationship entailed. In other words, not romanticize it. And look at why things, you know, went the way that they did, because there's a reason. And, um, the higher message is the Four of Wands. So this is a spiritual message. This card relates to happy home, happy marriage. And basically, as the spiritual message, it's like keep your eyes on the prize. When you're meeting people, when you're dating people, have this as your template or your goal, your vision board of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. A lot of times with Libra, uh, it's the bright, shiny object, the person who is really good looking. Um, they're really suave. They're very charming. Because those are all qualities that describe Libra. So you appreciate them in other people. But what can we say about somebody like that? They could be a con artist, right? So the qualities, it's interesting that that Four of Wands is right below that Ace of Pentacles, because Pentacles is all about the tangible, the things that you can hold in your hand and you can prove are true. And of course, with relationships, you can't hold them in your hand, but you can see if somebody keeps their word, if they're, you know, if they're dependable, if they um, are people that have a purpose in life. I'm not talking about that they make uh, six figures or they, you know, drive this kind of car. To me, that is so shallow. But if they are people who are salt of the earth, <laughs> maybe that's what um, I, I'll call this video now. I, I don't know. That might be confusing. But you know what I mean. 
that sometimes the, the best people out there get overlooked because they aren't the best looking, they don't have the most, um, they don't make the most money. Um, and if you're looking for that home life that you've been wanting to have, and even if you are retired, you could still be wanting a happy home. It doesn't mean you have to um, be filling it with children. You may have already been there and done that anyhow. But um, I'm talking about ha being able to come home at night if you work outside the home and you don't dread going there, that you actually can't wait to see that person after five years, after ten years. Um, <laughs> what is coming in is represented by the Five of Wands. Sometimes this can be advice. But um, this is like, the reason I laughed is this is every Libra's worst nightmare. It, the Five of Wands is about conflict. Now, depending on your particular situation, if you are, like, let's say you're employed, you're at a job that you don't like, um and you want to go, you get another job offer, this may be that you have to um, ruffle some feathers and you're going to have to deal with it. For some people you may get, I, I'm thinking that some of you may get um, invited back to work at a certain company where you were working at and this is also due to the fact that in um, December, we, the same day as that Mercury retrograde on the 3rd, we also have a full moon in in uh, Gemini. So it could be that you hear back from a former employer that may have laid you off and they're offering you a job but you may still be upset about how it ended the first time and you you may not want to go back for more. And the five of um, wands is like you may have to get into the, it's not, you can't be ab above the fray, you may have to get into it and you may have to fight for your life. You may have to fight for, um, you may have to compete. And if you dislike that, then perhaps it's a job offer that you don't want to engage in. Also, in personal relationships, if there, um, oh, you know, another thing too I should say is that the, for the higher message, the Four of Wands could be somebody who is a fire sign, fiery temperament, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, who, again, um, maybe they are someone who is really right for you, but for some reason you have filed them into the category of being a friend. Um, and it's, it's kind of funny to me that people will, and I'm going to say women because I'm a woman, speaking as a woman, that some women will just uh, file away certain people and say, oh yeah, he's a great friend because we really have these amazing talks and everything like that. But it's almost like you can't really be attracted to somebody that you have great talks with when that should be the number one determining factor almost in my opinion. Uh, besides like even emotional connection because sometimes you know, some people are think they're emotionally into somebody and they're really just physically attracted to them and they can't tell the difference. But if you really have this strong rapport. Now with that five of wands, it could be that you are mixing things up with that person and it's really a lively situation, especially if they are your opposite sign Aries because Aries people are very combative, but they can be playful in some of that. So it might just be that you're sparring with them, engaging with them in a flirtatious way that you haven't really um, kind of settled into to anything, but you you like them. Um, the other thing too, I think, is that some people may have been, uh, the, the Four of Swords could be you, you're separated from a partner and um, now this new relationship with an Earth sign has come in and it's it's on. You're gonna you're going to uh, get divorced, and maybe you were th taking some time away to get your head straight. And now you realize sometimes when when people meet someone else, they have that contrast, and they go, yeah, you know, this is more of a normal relationship. 
it, when you've been in a relationship, especially for a longer period of time, you can start to think that certain things are normal, that they're not, you know? And then the outcome is represented by the Four of Pentacles, which is the card of, um, it can be like financial stability. And in a case of a love relationship, a partner that you have the potential for forming a very long lasting union because they are, you know, the two of you just really mesh well and it bodes well for the future. So um, it can be good for either, it's a good outcome for either your love life or your career. So that's wonderful. And I'm going to pick an additional card. I didn't do it when I shuffled the cards. This one is from a new deck. I've been kind of uh, eager to show this off. I've become an Amazon affiliate, so I, I'm providing links for all of the cards that I use in any given reading. Um, and one thing that I notice is that sometimes I'll order a deck and I won't really use it that much. And there's a reason for that. Either I don't really resonate with the, the particular deck, or in some of my readings, I don't really care to use oracle cards. I don't know why that is. I think part of it is because I'm usually reading from a booklet and it seems kind of like, it doesn't seem like I'm really putting anything into it myself. But what I can do here is kind of make the connection between the other cards. Um, this is what the booklet looks like. And um, I want to also show you the back. I think a Libra person will appreciate the beauty of the, of the, uh, what do you call it? Just the design. It's very good card stock, which is important to me. I've actually, I, I, you can check if you're, if you're interested in these kinds of um, reviews of different decks, I did finally get around to make one. I think it was last week and you can check my channel for that. I, um, I've been working with certain decks that I use on a regular basis and I only included the ones that made that cut. But I'm going to be doing another one, I think, where I'm I'm uh, I'm including some of the other decks that I have. I might not use them very often, but I have them. And some, you know, there are people out there that might like them. You know, we're all different. So let me pick this card. Kind of cut the deck. They're thick, but it's like I can't even grab onto it. It's so thick. Oh my god, I think, didn't I get this for the other, I think I might have gotten this for another sign. I didn't, I didn't pick the, these cards for every sign, because I kind of forgot, so. Anyway, let me get out the book and see what it says, see if there's any connection. I believe, in, one thing I, I have to tell you though, is that these cards are not going to be like the typical deck, like this is the Morgan Greer deck, it's not going to be like that. Um, Quite frankly, I was a little bit shocked when I got the deck and looked on the box and said 62 cards, because they're supposed to be 78 in a tarot deck. So I still haven't figured out what card, you know, how they eliminated it. But basically what they said in the booklet that I did read was that um, the writer weight version of the tarot is not um, the end-all be-all of interpretations. And Pamela Coleman did the illustrations which I find very um, evocative. And, you know, like they really tell what the card's meaning is, as far as I know. But I'm not like this super historian on the, the tarot, so I don't know. But um, how they eliminated those cards, I still have yet to find out. And I think the roses that I picked, the seven of roses, do correspond with cups, but it's going to be quite different in terms of it. Okay, I'm going to hold up the card as they describe the scene. This card reveals a time of harmony, balance, and justice. Okay, Libra, right there you should know that that's Lib Libran traits, right? In your life. A desk holds balance scales? I don't see scales. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading, I'm reading the Seven of Forces, not the, see it said forces, not roses, it's, it looked like roses, okay, that's pretty embarrassing, uh, you know, and I can't, I can't edit this, so there you go, okay, well, 
<laughs> well, you're gonna you're gonna have to deal with that. Okay, a steam port teems with activity as cargo is loaded off and onto many ships. Two women on a small tender boat are on their way to the great ship, which will take them on their journey. Two men with their trunks and cases wait to follow. This card shows a time for a journey, a move, or a relocation. You may be taking your work or creative endeavors in a whole new direction, whether figuratively to a new industry or literally to a new city. However this journey occurs, it is sure to take you to new places and greater opportunities. Although it may require something safe behind, leaving something safe behind, it is not the time for staying safe in the harbor. It's time for finding and exploring new wor worlds. So go get packed. And um, so, you know, going back to that Ace of Pentacles, some of you may even know that, that there is a new job offer in the works because you've, um, you're in between jobs and you've been applying, and yet you, you know what's funny? Okay, all right, you guys. Um, it's morning. I, sometimes I'm a little bit, um, you know, scattered. And I did not tell you about what crosses you. So even though um, I've just gotten the Oracle card, this kind of goes along with that, the World card. Um, in the upright position, it means travel. In the challenged position, it could mean some reason why you're not doing so. So in December, Mercury is retrograde. This can especially affect travel plans. So don't believe that just because if something gets canceled, that means it's canceled for good. But also, if this is a time to tie up loose ends in December, then do that. If you are uh, wanting to move on with your life, you don't like where you are, then tie up those loose ends. And it may uh, require a little bit of conflict before you can... Um, get your needs met. So you're going to have to risk that. That's one of the things that I think holds Librans back is the fear of conflict. And in my experience, I'm not a Libran myself, but the people that I've seen who are Librans, some of them have a lot of drama in their lives until they can embrace the fact that that conflict exists. There are people that have different opinions than you do. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that um, the world is going to end if somebody disagrees with you or disapproves of you. You have to learn how to not need that approval um, in order to go for what you really want in life. Or otherwise, you're just living somebody else's life at the end of the day. Okay, you guys. Well, there was a little bit of a detour there, but um, I hope you enjoyed this, and good luck to you in December. Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, take care, bye.